This is Greg Troutling with Marine Technology Reporter TV, and we're very pleased today to be joined by Pat Patrick Moeller, the CEO of Core Power Ocean, a wave energy technology developer. And Patrick, first and foremost, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Greg. Great to be here. Okay. So Patrick, just to start, I'm sure many of the people watching this know the Core Power brand. Why don't you just give us a brief overview of Core Power today? Sure. So uh, Core Power, we are a developer of a new class of high efficiency wave energy converters. And we're working to introduce this technology into the market to make wave energy a more reliable and more competitive source of uh, clean energy. Okay. Um, well, as I'm sure you know better than I, uh, developing a technology like this is continual investment. Uh, can you broadly categorize how Core Power is investing today? Sure. Uh, so in Core Power, we've been following a five-stage product development and verification process. And we have completed uh, three stages uh, of that, where we started small-scale testing. We did tank testing in Portugal and in France. And then we built a half-scale system in stage three that we demonstrated in the Orkney Islands in, in uh, northern Scotland together with the Vidrola, the, the big utility. And on that half scale demonstration, we first did uh, dry testing in a bespoke dry test rig in Stockholm, where we are developing the inside of the wave energy devices, the, the drivetrain. So we spent about half a year of debugging, uh, stabilizing the system uh, through simulated wave loading in, in a big test rig on land. And then we moved it to Scotland and got it uh, tested in the ocean for a little bit more than half a year. And through that, we could verify the survivability of the system. We have some new technologies to make us transparent and protected in big storm waves, uh, where we get excellent uh, results in. And then we could also measure all the power production. And in every sea state, we could verify that we got about the same production uh, as uh, predicted by the simulation models. So between two and 3% delta between actual measured production and simulated values before going into the ocean. So there was a tremendous amount of learning uh, coming out of that. So that took, these three stages came between 2012 and 2018. And since 2018, we've now been developing our first commercial scale system that is called the C4 BOY. Uh, so this is a nine meter diameter uh, device mm -hmm. and it's a power rating of 300 kilowatts. So we, ha we have secured about 32 million euros of funding to date. And the total cost of these stage four and five activities is around 55 million euros of bringing the technology to market. Okay, is, is the plan now, um, are, do you plan to be a manufacturer of these systems or do you plan to license these systems or is it gonna be a hybrid? Uh, so we are planning to become a leading OEM. So Coopar is putting up the infrastructure to actually build the devices, mm -hmm. to do the final assembly, and then also to offer operations and maintenance contracts to our customers, the ones who will be operating the, the wave farms. Um, so Patrick, I'm, I'm sure you are much more well-versed on the ins and outs of renewable energy than even I, because you're in the weeds, you're living it each and every day. Um, as you know, uh, offshore wind energy has accelerated more rapidly than wave energy devices to bring that utility scale. So when you look at the core power ocean technical proposition, what makes you believe that this system, your plan is ready to flip the script on that, if, uh, as we said? That is true. So, I mean, wave energy has not followed the same curve of acceleration as offshore wind. It's fantastic to see now how much deployment that is actually taking place in offshore wind and especially seeing floating wind coming online now in, in the recent years after that has become a bankable technology. It's amazing. And we, we actually see a lot of opportunities for customers to combine floating wind installations with wave energy. And several of the customers are now looking to develop a race using our technology is doing that exact combination. By that, you can then get a product which sells electricity that has a lower variability and you can export that product through the same offshore cable and the same electrical infrastructure offshore 
So you can reduce the uh, capex and you can sell a product that has a higher value into the market. Uh, but getting back to your question on, on wave energy. Uh, so wave energy traditionally has or historically has uh, either devices have broken in storms or they've just not produced enough electricity to make it a viable uh, business case. And we are addressing those two main challenges by introducing a new way to make devices protected and transparent in the biggest storm waves. So there we are introducing a function to wave energy similar to uh, the wind turbines pitching the blades in storms. You know, every commercial wind turbine has the capacity to pitch the blade to protect from overspinning in the most fierce wind conditions. And that's a function that's been missing in, in wave energy. And we're now adding that uh, through our resonant type of devices. So that's the first big contribution I think we are doing to the sector. The second one is advanced phase control technology that then strongly amplifies the response to regular waves in, in the typical sizes that you're finding over a year in, in the site. And by phase control, we are amplifying the response to the waves, thereby the motion and the power capture. So in a, in a one meter wave coming in, for instance, our boys might move three meters up and down when they get in phase by the resonance phenomena that, that you get then. So in average, our devices can capture five times as much energy over the year compared to the amount of machinery that you need to install in the ocean. Okay. So the, the structural efficiency of wave energy is being improved by more than a factor of five by this. Actually. And we, we're bringing it to more than 10 megawatt hours per ton of equipment being installed in the ocean. So I think that is well in line with the best floating wind concepts uh, as well out there. When you look at the greatest technical challenge to bring your system from where it is today to online utility scale, what is that technical challenge and how are you addressing it? Well, the, the technical challenges that we still need to prove, of course, we, we've uh, had very strong results on our half scale system. Now we are moving full scale. We need to demonstrate that we actually do survive the toughest storms in a exposed Atlantic coast uh, site as Agusadora in Portugal. So that's probably the biggest risk always to show that you survive the toughest weather. Uh, we're very confident that we will do it. We have actually between the half scale testing and where we are now conducted four additional rounds of model scale testing in, in, in wave basins, in wave tanks. Uh, to verify the, the most extreme uh, weathers. Uh, so it's looking really good, but still the proof is in the pudding. Uh, so, so that is coming. And then secondly, that we are producing uh, to the amount that we said we would be producing and that we have done into smaller scales. I guess it's those two things to get that verified and getting third party validation uh, on those numbers. We, we are working with the DMV GL uh, in this case for our customers to come to a point where they can see that this is going from a technical challenge uh, into a pure financial transaction. Uh, that is, I develop a project, I put this much investment in, and then the returns are the following. I mean, that's essentially the case for any regular fixed offshore wind installation or solar installation today. And I guess that is the biggest challenge in, in, in wave energy, getting it to a fully bankable uh, technology where you can access mainstream uh, financing. Uh, for. Just in a very concise manner, uh, from where we are today to where you want to be, can you just give me kind of a step-by-step a, a -step timeline in the, the major highlights uh, that you'll be getting along the way? Sure, so we are now building the first commercial scale system dry testing it in the spring of 21, then installing it in the ocean in the second half of 2021, running it for one year and then doing a cycle of uh, learning, uh, one more design update to the final commercial state of the technology that we call the C5 machines, and then getting three of them installed in 2023. And by then running them for a bit more than one year in the ocean, we should then get type certification on the technology and then achieve what we define as a bankable technology, ready to start shipping.